Got it. Oh, and some of these have multiple parts too. I forgot about that, so uh, it's okay. We'll 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 be okay to get them. Yeah, these these definitely aren't the fastest ones. Got it. Gonna keep going. All right, this is another one that's quite lengthy. All right, keep going. This is awful. Um. Yeah, I mean, the problem here is, like, we may only be able to get through, like, these first, you know, 10 here. Okay, yeah. I mean, most of them have multiple parts, so that's... Okay, do you have um, anything available tomorrow still or no? Uh, I'm still waiting to hear back. What's your availability okay. tomorrow? Like, what's preferred? Um, I work three to nine, so any time before or after that I could do. Okay. All right. Uh, um, let's go down to 11... Go go to twelve. I'm looking for some fast ones here that we can do. Also, okay. none of these are fast. Keep going. I mean, I know you got like eighty questions here. Right. Not fast. Not fast. Uh, I mean, some of these you can do with a calculator online. Skip that one. You can do online. Keep going. Okay. That one, same one you could find online, maybe. Same. Keep going. Uh, keep going. That one's online. I just want to spend one or two more minutes here, seeing if we can like this one. This this group of ten, you can find a lot of these online. I'm gonna go to twenty, okay. nineteen or twenty, somewhere in there. Yeah, same thing. Um, I was hoping to find like some integrals, like like right there. A lot of these you can do online, starting at like twenty, twenty-one. Um, you can find them. I'm happy to explain them as well. But um, if you want, I can grab a few snips from like here at twenty-one. That could okay. go faster get more done sure. today okay. yeah that's fine okay so i grabbed this one uh i'm gonna do a couple more there 22 it's another fast one to do i got it all right that's another quick one i got it uh Okay, let me grab this one and then we'll just, that's probably enough, uh, true, truthfully, but we'll see. Okay, let me share my screen and get started. Hit the right buttons, Matthew. Mm -hmm. right. Share screen. All right. All right, find the absolute extrema if they exist. Um, so this is where the calculator really uh, really does help, but we're going to get to that. So you first have to take the derivative. This is the power rule. Um, one of the confusing things is part of the, part of the course is you're going back and forth between the derivative and the integral. So this is that first first box there. That's the the definition of the derivative. You'll have to let me know what the next, know what the next thing is um, for this, if you can. All right. That says identify the absolute maximum if it exists, as well as all values of x where it occurs. Select the correct choice. Okay. Well, we're looking for maxes and mins on that domain. So the first thing is you go back and you actually evaluate the original function at the two endpoints and that's where that calculator really comes handy i will do that as well um okay. get the numbers to a couple times today i've not been able to find it i think it's just need to clean everything to find it that's fine yeah no big deal um and zero is five okay so that's first part of this next part is to set the um the derivative equal to zero. Factor out anything. So x equals negative six and x equals negative two. Those are both in this interval. So you got to go back and calculate both of those.
to 59. All right. So the max, you said you're looking for the max. The max is at, the max is five, but it occurs at zero and negative six. So it might be like a comma situation where you say, you know, zero comma negative six and one. Um, and I'm guessing the, the min is going to be the next one. Okay. So it's x equals negative six, negative two, and the max is five. Okay, it said that the second answer was incorrect, so the negative six, negative two. No, no, no the only at zero and negative six are the is the max. Zero oh, negative not eight. Oh, okay. about that okay and then yeah the minimum the next one minimum will be uh negative 157 at negative nine okay all right that was the last one on that one so the next problem here is very similar. Uh, you have to first evaluate the endpoints uh, that's the that's all calculator there at this point. Does it say to round? It does. Okay. I, so then, then you take a derivative. Uh, derivative here is x squared plus three x minus four. You set it equal to zero. You have to factor you get negative four and positive one. And those are both in the domain. So you have to check both of those in the original. Okay. The, uh, the way to do this though on the final is probably to graph the function and look for the ends and maxes that way. Okay. So uh, max and min. Um, so sorry, just so the absolute maximum is negative four or 21.67. 21.67. So the, that the first one's the Y value and then the second one's the X value. Oh, it wanted me to round. That's what I was doing. Uh, this is supposed to be 19. Okay. Two decimal places. Three. Is not liking my answers. Um, uh, so the apps. Oh, I'm sorry. There is no. I should. Uh, there is no absolute maximum. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. The reason is is because the graph actually looks like this, and it 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 just goes up forever. And there is no absolute min either. Okay. It said there was absolute minimum. There is an absolute minimum. 
that's uh oh oh on that interval okay i'm sorry there is i'm sorry i'm slightly distracted here no that's why why Analogous. so it didn't it didn't like any of these numbers no for the second one it didn't it's not even 0 0.83 at one like what did it give you the answer no because it's the one where you can check it three times before okay do we need to just move on I to the next problem not, yeah we can move on i just don't know if i'm not rounding or right or is it okay. just like, okay whatever so it's two decimal places that, that's what i rounded to but maybe, right. maybe i made a mistake here so again just like the previous ones you got to evaluate at the two endpoints Doesn't like this. Um, this one is not on your test. Okay. But uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't still do it. Let me try one more thing here. Plus three X. All right, so negative two is negative 11.73. And that one is 19. Pretty tough derivative. Um, I mean, this is where I would almost tell you that it's better to graph than to even try to deal with derivative stuff. Okay. So if you had your, your graphing calculator available, I'm going to snip it in so you can see it. Um, okay. The main thing is to like limit your window to what's going on between minus two and one. And let me grab a snip here. So you can, you can see here, like what I snipped in here, like it's, it's, I've gone too far. Like you only care from minus two to one. But this okay. one does fall in there. That ends up being a critical point. So you can see that that is the absolute min. The the one is the absolute max. Okay. Moving on here, unless there's some other parts to that. Nope, that's it. Okay. All right, so new problem here. Um, I mean, maybe we should just go to graphing. I, I'm, I'm not sure what your, your goal is to get at this. Like um, the graph of this from five and beyond will show us the answer. Okay. We can but, go to graphing. Then. Okay. And, and I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Uh, plus 12x squared. Uh, so the only thing with graphing is you got to get the proper window, which could be a little bit challenging. Um, if you haven't haven't had to do this in a while. Uh, it's fine. So I'm going to snip in a graph so you can see what we got going on here. Uh, so there is the graph of this thing. Uh, you obviously have to find the max second calc max on your TI-384. So the maximum profit is, it's not 500. It's actually in thousands of dollars. So that's 500,000, no comma, when 10 hundred thousand hires are sold. Okay. All right. Uh, next one here. 
So if, if it's just a numerical problem, like the last one, you would go straight to the calculator. This one requires you to take a derivative of this function. Uh, so that's that's where there's there's no workaround. You got to do it by by hand. Okay. Okay. And then it asks for the maximum number of fish swimming after that when the water is at blank degrees. So we have to we have to you have to check the two endpoints and then wherever the derivative equals zero or uh look at the graph again because the graph will tell you if it's different than the two endpoints. Okay. Um so the, like like let me if you're okay with it, I'll just keep graphing these things. Yeah. Um that seems like the way I'll do it on the test, honestly. One of the things that that is is pretty challenging is that that windowing. So just you know, take some time to if you have to, to look at that. Um, minus x cubed plus four point five x squared plus one sixty x plus four seven nine five. Let me adjust this. So here is a graph. And you can see you can see the answer just kind of pops out once you've got the graph of this. So the the maximum is that five eight 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 point five. Nine is the input, which is probably the temperature. Okay, right. Probably nine degrees is your is the answer you're looking for. Okay, yeah, that was right. And that's the last one that's asking for. Right, so then, uh, all right, if the price charge for candy bar is PX cents, then X thousand candy bars will be sold in a certain city where this is the price. Find an expression of total revenue. So revenue is price times quantity. So it's that it's that thing you just found times x. And if you distribute in, you get 162x minus x squared over 10. Will you just check that before we proceed here? Make sure that that is. Correct. Uh, it did say that's incorrect. And then the explanation I gave was multiply the price by the number of units sold. So it didn't, it, what did it give you? Oh, you're just saying the feedback? Yeah, that's all it told me. And it's, you've got. Yeah, I entered just that. Um, so one of the things, I mean, it says it's, it's, it's an X sense. Um, Revenue is typically in dollars. Like maybe you need to multiply by a hundred here. I don't know. Um, I don't know why that would matter. Um, so total revenue from the sale of X thousand candy bars. One six two X minus X squared over 10. Yeah, I'm really not sure. Um, we could just come back to this or I, mean, I can check it out yeah. on Chegg. I don't, I don't know what else to suggest here. Uh, we can go back to it and I'll look it up after, see if there's anything. That's really weird. Okay. It's probably something very small. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it isn't very frustrating. So. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. New question. A fence must be built to enclose an area of 20,000 feet squared fencing trip. About four dollars per foot for the two sides along the north and south facing walls and eight dollars per square foot on the other two sides. Find the cost of the least expensive fence. All right, so uh so we have uh we have four X plus 8y plus 4x plus 8y. That's the cost. Okay. 
right? So when you when you simplify that, it's eight x plus sixteen y is the cost. Your other constraint here is that the area, mm -hmm. twenty thousand square feet area, is x times y. So you always have two equations. You have the one that you're trying to maximize or minimize, and then this other like constraint equation that you have to solve for for one of the variables. So let's solve for y. Y is twenty thousand over x. So that goes in in here. So the cost is eight x plus sixteen times twenty thousand over x. Eight x plus thirty three hundred twenty thousand over here. So you could graph this, which is probably what you should do, and you'll find uh, you'll find the minimum of that. Okay. You, you can't get it. I mean, you don't have to multiply it. I guess, yeah, I guess you don't, you, you don't have to multiply it out, but you do have to. Um, you have to be able to find the minimum, which could be a little again, like could be really challenging depending on comfort level with the calculator. Uh, sometimes you don't see it come come back up. Um, okay. Oh boy. Yeah, like uh, I got my Y's. That's one of the issues here. Let me change the Y. All right. So if you don't get the right window, it looked pretty flat when you graph this. Let me grab the snip here. Yeah. If you if you if you if you just if you don't really know how to zoom in, it'll it'll look like this uh, on the right. This is the you know proper windowed view. So the 200 is the value of X, 3,200 is the cost. Let's go back and see what it looks for. Uh, it looks like that's what they're looking for, 3,200, they're looking for the Y value. Okay. All right, that was right. All right. Next question coming up here. All right, manufacturers steady demand for 38,000 more sugar. Past tellers store one case for one year, $30 in setup cost, produce each batch, and $50 produce each case. All right, so the uh, the EOQ is like the square root of two times demand times the holding cost over storage cost, maybe. I need to look this one up. Um, okay. But... We we have all the numbers. The demand is thirty eight thousand four hundred. Um, yeah. You know, let me just quickly do a quick check to find this. Okay. Um, we could have done for the other one. We we did one like this in uh, an earlier lesson. The uh, sorry, the whole so the setup cost. All right, so in your problem here, it looks like it's the square root of two times 38,400 times the 30 setup cost and the ten dollar storage cost. And hopefully, this worked out when I helped your friend, her problem didn't work out as nicely as. Yours worked out. Okay. Yeah, yours works out to 480. So if you could check that for us. That was right. All right. And then uh, the next one is like this answer divided by 12. Maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. Let me go check. Okay. Uh, it's the number of batches of sugar that should be manufactured annually. So you take the demand. So part B is the demand, which is how many you need. 
38,400 and you divide it by 480. That ends up being uh, 80 pieces. Oh, that's not, that's not that one, that's part B. 80 okay. times to reorder. So there's some formulas there. It's it's demand over uh, you know EOQ. You, you'll find different formulas in different books. Sometimes just call it like N or Q. So, okay. all right. Uh, moving a little faster than I thought we went through these. So you know probably need to grab some other questions. Uh, okay. But um, so this is one of those that I was mentioning before, where like you don't need to know your integrals. You actually need to know derivatives. So the answer here is um, just give you the answer. It's um, 2x to the 4th over 4 plus 5x cubed over 3 minus 9x squared over 2 plus 2x plus c. And then simplified, it's 1 half x to the 4th plus 5 over 3x cubed minus 9 over 2x squared plus 2x plus c. So one of your answers will be this on the exam. And if you take the derivative of this, so if you're really good with derivatives, that derivative of this will get you back to to that thing, and that's how you're going to want to do it on on the exam, rather than trying to learn integral rules. Okay, that definitely seems like that it would be easier. Okay, that was right. So the next one here. Same same idea. Uh, so the, to do this properly, there's actually a, a rewrite step, which is to use the exponent rules. Um, you end up getting, your, your antiderivative ends up being um, negative five over negative five plus C. So it's negative 12 over five X to the minus five power plus C. And then again, like the, there's a few ways that this could appear. Uh, the x to the fifth will probably appear down there in your multiple choice. But again, if you can take a derivative of that and get back to the original, you know, you'll be you'll be way ahead. All right. But it could be either. Uh yeah, there's there's two different ways it could appear, I suppose. Okay. okay. Uh, let me know if there's any issues taking. Oh, no, sorry. That one. Yeah, that was good. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Next question here. Uh, same thing here. You're going to have to find the antiderivative of this, which you will have. Um, you will have a you know, it's multiple choice here. It ends up being 3x squared minus 7x plus C. Difference is that they're giving you the fixed cost here. So one of your answers will have the right fixed cost in it. So the fixed cost is what happens when x is 0, y is 9. So that's like a second thing to check. Like the first thing is like, does the derivative of whatever the answers get you back to this? The second thing is like, does the initial putting 0 in for x give you 9? Um, so to, to do that, to solve for that, like you would put 9 in and then 0 for x. And you'd find that c is is 9. It's not always just the number, although it gives that impression that it is. So the okay. cost function is 3x squared minus 7x plus 9. So again, if the derivative of that, the derivative of that gets you back to here, so know your derivative rules. And then you know when you put 0 in, do you get 9? You do. So that's, that's how you would do it on the test. OK. That was right. All right. All right. So another sort of long, exhausting question here. You have to take the uh, the antiderivative of this, uh, which 
out of a lot of work. I don't, I, the, the previous problems are more likely to be on there than this one, but. Okay. Zero one zero nine five t squared over two plus two point one three t plus c, and so this this number ends up being c. I mean, if you just want to go like a general, you know, does it work most of the time? Yeah, generally that is that is the uh, the value. But actually, this is a an exception, of course, to that. Um, because they're saying that that t is actually t of zero is actually in two thousand, but they're giving you two thousand and fifteen, which is t equals fifteen. So this this is this is incorrect in this problem. It's actually that fifteen, uh, comma thirty nine thousand zero nine seven is the ordered pair for the uh, solving for t or for c, not for t. So. First things first, let me divide that. Um, so it ends up being 0 0.005475 t squared. All right, so now you're putting 15 in for t and 39,097 in for this, but but uh, it's in thousands. So this is actually 39.097 because it's in thousands. Well, that's a little wrinkle there. Equals 0 0.005475 times 15 squared plus 2.13 times 15 plus C. And then you would uh, simplify this and solve, solve for C by moving those over. 0 0.005475 times 15 squared. All right, so it ends up being... 5.9151 for C. Okay, so I just that. So it ends uh, up being this 0 0.005475 e squared plus 2.13t. Uh, it didn't like that. It said, use the indefinite integral rules to integrate the function. Be sure to use the values given to solve for the arbitrary constant. Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, we could redo it. I mean, even if we're just, this is five, just to be clear, my hand is really poor here. Five, four, seven, five, T squared plus 2.13p plus 5.9151. Oh, yeah, that's what I put in. Yeah, not sure. But I'll come back to that another okay. time. All right, so I did run out of questions. So if you want to share your screen again, uh, we can, mm -hmm. you know, we just maybe go back, fill the ones that were missed. Okay, yeah, that works for me. Not sure. Actually, let me, oh, hang on. Let me look at that one. You got your engine okay. there. Um, I think it 5. was. 5.9151. Yeah, yeah, that looks, I don't see any issues with what you wrote, so. Yeah. Pro probably on me. Okay, no worries. Um, and so then, yeah. We There's a good one. That. There's a good okay. one to do. <laughs> yeah, let me pick some short ones to grab. Um, I guess I got to be careful not to go around them ran randomly, so. You can know what where, where to find them. Yeah, I think so. Uh, right, I got it. Um, you want to go to the next one? I'm sorry, I did not get 25. I apologize. Oh, okay. No, I did. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got so I got that. Um, 
34. Okay, that's not too bad. We can do that one. All right, got it. That one we can do. All right, keep going. Uh, yeah, this one we can do. All right, got it. Is that a new one? Uh, no. Okay, yeah. there is. All right, we can do that one. Maybe one or two more. Yeah, I got it. All right. Let's see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's probably not. It's probably, we can do one, maybe one more. Okay. Grab, let's try, let's see. Oh boy. All right. Yeah, the, okay. this, grab that. There. Uh, all right, so let's go. Let me go and share my screen. All right. So the problem we left off on is, so for a particular object, the um, the acceleration is given. So you have to find the antiderivative of that, which is 10 over three T cubed plus seven T plus C. Then take the derivative of this, you get back to the previous one to find uh, C, in this case, it is often just that number. It actually is that here. Um, you could probably get away with using that. So try that, please. Let me know if that is correct. We have any issues on that. Uh... Is that okay? Um, that was like 24, 25. Yeah, it said that's incorrect. 10 over 3 T squared. 10 over 3 T cubed. T cubed, yeah. that's a cube. Plus 7 T. Oh, cubed, yeah. That's what I put in. This is unbelievable. Um, yeah. this oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Five, 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 five. five. There's, this is five, sorry. I am. Uh, five, five. That is the issue. Okay, that was it. Okay, so moving on here to next problem here. So there, the acceleration function is given as minus 34t. So your velocity is the antiderivative, not, not, not just minus 34, minus 34t plus c. Now it says that v of zero equals zero, which means that that is zero, c is zero okay. in that case. So then s of t is the antiderivative of that, which is minus 17t squared plus another c. But it again says, oh, this time it says it starts at 5508. That's going to be your, your c. Minus 17t squared plus 5508. Try that for your position function. OK, that was right. And then it just asks, it will take the object blank seconds to hit the ground. Yes, yeah, so you're setting this equal to 0. Minus 17, this is part b, minus 17t squared plus 5508 equals 0. When you solve for t, you get 5508 over 17 square root of that. And what are we rounding to? Or is it, ex it probably doesn't. Just simplify your answer. All right. So that means it works out perfectly. 18. It's never that nice in real life. Clean. Nothing's clean like that. All right. Perfect. That was right. All right. So this one, um, 
this is a, this is a problem you'll you'll there's no way to do this without sort of knowing it the u is is typically like in parentheses or it's an exponent or it's under a root in this case the u is 5x to the 5th minus 5 and so du is the derivative of that that's why you got to know your derivatives 25x to the 4th that's the second box there Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, all right, so the same thing uh, in this problem. You actually have to, um, you have to know the U substitution. Uh, like I said, like these are all, these can all be done um, on the internet, like starting here. You can, you can really just type these into certain things and get the answer. I would encourage you to do that. But in terms of okay. like how you do it on the test, again, you will want to take the derivative of the answer and um, you know, see which one gets you back to, to this. That's gonna be your best, your best path here. So the uh, the answer here though is uh, negative seven over no, negative three. No, that's not right either. All right. <laughs> Struggling here too. Um so let me uh and at this point you don't you're you're not going to uh I mean you're not going to do this by hand. There's just no reason for us to even do it by hand. So it ends up being minus one over seven x plus one cubed plus c. And that would be one of the answers. The derivative of this is does get you back uh to this as an example. So go ahead and try that. Okay, yeah, that was right. Uh, so kind of same idea here. There's gonna be four answers. You're going to, um, you know, just look for the one that matches up best with this. Now, if you're going to use an online calculator, um, you do not have to use the indicated variable. You can uh, you can use X instead and just make sure you change your answer back. Okay. So this one right here has this form 1 over 12, 4X squared plus 2 to the 3 halves power plus C. Again, the derivative of that will get you back to this view if you can sort of visualize how that might occur. Okay. Four. Try and get one more done here. Okay. Okay, it did not like that one. Oh, it's got to be Z. I, I did. I did the thing that I said. Oh, okay. That's my bad. <laughs> oh man. All right. Um, won't be able to get to the next one, but like I said, you can you can find a million calculators if uh if you need to. All right. Okay. I will get back to you on tomorrow. Uh, 